Each year, American refineries process more than six billion barrels of oil. But here's a stunning fact. From less than 5% of that comes more than 100 billion pounds of plastic. That's more plastic than the combined weight of every man, woman, and child in the United States. Plastic is oil's most abundant finished product. We can't live without it, and it's getting expensive. Even something as simple as a paper cup, its functionality is based on having plastic on the inside here. Because if you didn't have that plastic, your latte would be all over your lap because it's the plastic that seals the liquids inside and allows this cup to do its job. Monomers, the chemicals from which plastics are made, come from the gases collected during refining of oil and natural gas. Like other fractions, these gases are cracked into smaller hydrocarbon elements, known as chemical feedstocks. From seven basic feedstocks, including ethylene, propylene, and benzene, nearly all the plastic in the world is manufactured. Nylon is an example where we can actually show you how it's made. So we add in here a diacid, and then we're going to add a diamine. And at the interface of these two chemicals, both are derived from oil, you end up with nylon. Each year, more than 8 billion pounds of nylon make everything from stockings to parachutes. But nylon's not alone when it comes to many uses. Nearly every plastic can be formed and shaped in infinite ways. That's what makes it so valuable. A lot of folks think that plastics have always been cheap, you know, but that isn't true. Actually, for a long time, plastics have been more expensive than metals. The part of it that's cheap is manufacturing all of those different types of things. Spartec Plastics is an international manufacturer of plastic materials. With an annual production of more than 1.7 billion pounds. Their materials can be found in everything from food packaging to tanning beds to bullet resistant windows. Here at their La Mirada, California facility, the focus is on plastic sheeting and rolls, made from two of the more prominent plastics. This plant primarily runs ABS or polystyrene. They're both a, uh, a styrenic based material. Every time you open your refrigerator door, the shelf, the food liner, and certainly the door, that's polystyrene as well. ABS and polystyrene arrive at the Spartec facility in the form of plastic pellets. Some are virgin stock, others recycled. Air hoses move them throughout the facility until they reach the extruder, the heart of the operation. Inside this heat extruder is a long auger screw that steadily rotates, pulling the plastic pellets toward its opposite end. As the pellets compress and rub against one another, friction and heat are created, causing the plastic to melt. The taffy-like mix is then pushed through a thin die forming a plastic sheet that threads across a series of rollers. It may look fairly simple, uh, but there's a lot of geometry and a lot of calculations that go into the design of a screw, and a lot of that has just been derived by trial and error over time. This roll stock will be used in various packaging, while a quick change to a larger die results in plastic sheets. They can be shaped into single plastic pieces for spas, boats, even kayaks. You put this sheet in a couple of ovens and you just gently heat it on there as opposed to the really vigorous heating they went through to melt it. It will begin to soften until it begins to just sag and that's what they'll refer to it as the sag that it's got. That's moved around then and put over a mold and the old vacuum forming technique just pulls it down and sucks it down to make the form of whatever part it is that you want. Thermoforming is a key method for custom plastic manufacturing. But there are others, including welding. 
Vinyl, also known as PVC, is a petrol-based plastic known for its durability and flexibility. Its practicalities were first teed up in the 1920s by a chemical engineer in search of, legend holds, a better golf ball. Today, oil-based plastics still play a role in golf ball manufacture. And PVC's advantages have spread across industry, healthcare, and the military. Since 1997, the U.S. military has destroyed nearly 55% of its Cold War arsenal of chemical weapons. But it's still got nearly 14,000 tons to go, and surrounded by an environment filled with deadly agents like sarin. A worker's protective suit means the difference between life and death. Here at Vinyl Technology, They've manufactured more than 130,000 of these life-saving vinyl suits. The suit is basically 99% plastic material. The visor is basically convertible window material, which you'll find in convertible cars. Everything else is a special alloy of plastic films that's been specially developed for the chemical agent protection. It's made to slow down the permeation of that agent through the material to provide the worker with as long a working time as possible. There are no sewn parts or stitching on the suits. Instead, all the seams are welded using ultra-high radio frequencies to fuse the materials together. If you take a look, you'll see some of the intricate welds that, that go around the perimeter of the visor, welding the vinyl to the alloy, which is the white material. All the seams are extremely clean, and the seams are on the outside and provide the maximum comfort for the wearer. The suits aren't completed until they meet the workers who wear them. When the workers are preparing for an entry, they will don the suit, and then they will physically get heat sealed into the suit using a similar type of machine that we've used to manufacture the suits. So once they're in, they're in for good. They do their work and they physically get cut out of the suit and the suit is disposed of at that point. 